Hello, my name is Thomas Dimitrovich. In this session, we will specifically speak to transformer basics and how to calculate the infinite bus short circuit currents on the secondary of the transformer. This is important for the proper selection of circuit breakers when working to achieve selective coordination of circuit breakers around a transformer. The estimated duration of this presentation is four minutes. The infinite bus short circuit current on the secondary of the transformer is really a simple calculation and it provides us with a value of short circuit current that is the most that that transformer can provide on its secondary. It's a conservatively high number useful for specific applications of electrical equipment. The basic equation that we use is the full load amps times 100 over the percent impedance of the transformer. The secondary full load amps calculation equation that you'll use is seen in equation number three. If I combine equation number three here with equation number one, I get equation number two. This is how you calculate the maximum available short circuit current that you can see on any transformer. When a short circuit occurs on the secondary of a transformer, the current that flows in the primary will not be the same as that being delivered to the fault on the secondary. The difference is going to be dependent upon the turns ratio of the transformer. We can reflect the secondary current to the primary, and this is a simple calculation based upon the turns ratio. The primary current is equal to the secondary current times the secondary voltage over the primary voltage. It's shown here in equation number four. So let's do an example to help us understand this. For this 480 volt to 208 volt transformer, should a fault occur on the secondary and measured by a meter to be 10,000 amps, an ammeter, if placed in the primary, would read 4,333 amps. That's calculated in the equation at the top of this slide. Thanks to the turns ratio of the transformer, the current on the primary is reduced because it's at a higher voltage. Let's do a, a real world example. I have a 30 kVA transformer with a 4% impedance. The maximum available short circuit current that can be found on the secondary is 2,082 amps, and it's calculated here on this slide. That current reflected to the primary is what the overcurrent protective device number six will see for a fault on the secondary, and that number is 903 amps. For circuit breaker applications, these are important parameters. Remember, this is based on a 30 kVA transformer with 4% impedance. If you change any of those two parameters, the numbers will be different. Keep in mind that we are omitting some impedance that may change the short circuit current on the secondary. We're using the worst case impedance of the transformer. Smaller impedances of the transformer will yield higher secondary short circuit currents. And larger impedances of the transformer will yield smaller short circuit currents on the secondary. We're also emitting the secondary conductors that connect the main overcurrent protective device with the transformer. This could reduce the available short circuit current at the secondary panel, but will depend upon the size of the conductor and the length of that conductor. We're also emitting the fact that we will not have an infinite bus on the primary. We will probably be starting with some lower level of short circuit current at the primary of the transformer. But these emissions may in reality be insignificant to the process that we'll be following. We are approaching this as the worst case scenario, as we don't want to have to make changes after the project's installed and when we're reviewing the as-built drawings and completing our final studies. Fixing problems after the fact pertaining to selective coordination can get expensive very quick. This is a different way of looking at the exact same calculation we just made. During this faulted condition, if I place a current meter in the secondary and primary conductors of this transformer, the ammeter on the secondary would read 2,082 amps, the current being delivered to the short circuit. The ammeter on the primary would read 903 amps, which is calculated in the equation at the top of this slide. From a selective coordination perspective, during a fault, the overcurrent protective device on the secondary would see 2,082 amps, and the overcurrent protective device on the primary would only see 903 amps during this short circuit event. These are the two equations that you need to know. The first equation is useful when you have the nameplate of the transformer in front of you. Usually the secondary full load amps is printed on the nameplate, as is the percent impedance. The second equation is useful when you are provided with the KVA voltage and percent impedance of the transformer during the design phase. The connection of the transformer primary and secondary windings, meaning delta, y, or other, does not impact these calculations. Thank you for sharing your time to talk about this technical topic.